Hello everyone, today in our series of Doc Cable interviews, we have with us the pioneer of cadaver transplant program in India, Dr. Sunil Shroff. He is the president of Nephrology, Urology and Transplantation Society of SAG and has got many awards and accolades. He is the recipient of Lifetime Achievement Award from Rotary International Chennai, among many others. He has also got many publications to his credit. Thank you so much Dr. Shroff Thank for joining you. us today. Thank you. So, can you please share your experience regarding the cadaver transplantation program and its impact in India? When you look at 2017, uh, we have progressed since you know we passed this law, which accepted you know organ donation from brain death recipient, brain death donors, and this was 1995. So, almost 22 years we have progressed quite far, and from 2012 to 2016 our disease donation or cadaver donation rate every year doubled and as a result of which in 2012 we had 196 you know cadaver donors that resulted in about 600 organs when in 2015 we had close to 570 cadaver donors in our country and that gave 1500 organs and this last year 2016 we would have close to 800 cadaver donors, which will result in 2,000 organs, which I by that I mean kidneys, liver, heart, lungs, pancreas, intestine, hand, face, all kinds of organs. So the journey for the last 22 years has been, you know, a very incredible journey for some of us who have been in this program, because way back in 1995, when we started this program in this country, People didn't believe that this will work in our country, given our cultural diversity, given our religion, given our poor infrastructure and so on. But I had worked in this program for 12 years in England and I had seen how it was working there. And when I came back to India in 1995, the law had just been passed, fortunately. And I saw that the eye donation program was working well in India. So, at least my personal belief was that if given the right opportunity, we could take this program forward in our country. And our journey started in 1997 when we launched an NGO called Mohan, which stands for Multi Organ Harvesting Aid Network. And over the last 18 years, we did a huge amount of capacity building this program, training people like called transplant coordinators who would take, you know, uh, when at the time of grief, extreme grief when someone's loved one is dead, to actually for ask for organs is extremely challenging. So we had we trained about 1200 transplant coordinators over the last eight years to how to ask for organs. And that has made a huge difference in this program. So I think I look at this very positively and it's been a very humbling experience these 20 years in this program. Uh, while others have failed in promoting cadaver programs, you have succeeded in doing so. What is your mantra of success? I think, you know, this is such a challenging program and the dynamics are so complex. I don't think so, you know, anybody really wanted to get into this. And more than anything else, you know, our track record with kidney donation has not been brilliant in this country. We have had organ commerce, you see scandals every day. And when you talk of organ donation, mostly people talk of kidney donation. You know, so I think, you know, our track record has not been very good. So nobody would, has actually seriously taken up this cause because of the complexity and there are multiple things in this program it is the one side is regulation the other side is the complexity of asking for organs at the time of death i mean can you imagine a loved one dying and somebody coming and asking for organs it is so extremely difficult Definitely. and then after the organ has been retrieved the distribution of the organ well it has to be equitable mm -hmm. it has to be fair it has to go to the right person and then follow up, the results should be good. The surgery itself is very expensive. You know, but it is a life-saving surgery. You either have a transplant or you die, especially with the heart. When you have one heart, kidney, two kidneys, you can spare one and you can care for one. The heart you have only one. So these are life-changing moments, you know. So you have extreme grief on one side, but a donor family is donating, despite their grief, and you have extreme joy on the other side. Where you receive a decision now, 
So you, I call it the circle of life, where you see extreme grief and extreme joy at the same time. So you start becoming, you know, I said philosophical and start, but it's a very humbling experience when you see that as a surgeon in operation theater or in the hospitals, it's a very humbling experience. So, sir, since you have been successful in developing a center for training people for this cataract program, so what is your suggestions to others who want to develop success? Again, centers? talking about success, you know, success doesn't come easy. We've had failures after failures after failures and you see one small success. And my suggestion is you need to be, you know, ethical. You need to have the, you know, clarity in your mind that how you want to do it. You need to have systems in place in your hospital. Your top management needs to support the program. And you need to have a team. But many times in our country, as individuals, we are champions. When it comes to teamwork, we fail. And hospitals are having this problem. There are individual doctors who are extremely good, but the team doesn't work. And today, I keep saying this, our problem as far as the, our foundation is concerned, the program is concerned, is not in the, in the, in the public domain. We get our conversion rate for consent is almost 65% when our trained transplant coordinators goes and talks to the families. Our problem is with the doctors, you know, with the hospitals. They have a, you know, they have problems there. There are ego issues, there are system failures, and that's why this program is not working. If everybody, if the hospitals work properly, I think this program will fly in our country. Because you must remember, every day in our country, we have 32 people who donate eyes of their loved ones. Every day. We have three organ donations happening now in our country every day. And these are many of them are spontaneous. So I think I, I have great admiration for our Indian people. I feel they are very giving. You know, even after death, we have something called Pindadan in our culture. And Pindadan is all about giving away. And you know, organ donation is the highest form of giving. You know, somebody like, you know, I don't know if you read uh, Khalil. You know, Gibran, he says that uh, you give a little when you give of your possessions. You truly give when you give of yourself. And organ donation is about that giving. So it's a very high form of giving. And anybody who works in this program should work in it selflessly, with, you know, high motivation. Because if one family says yes for, you know, donation, you save eight lives. Because I am a surgeon. When I operate on one patient, I only save one life. But with one yes, you can save eight lives. So my, you know, whoever is watching this program, I would ask you all to pledge your organs. Because you can save multiple lives. Because after that, what are you going to do? The body is going to go to, you know, from dust we come and dust we go. So why? Why be so possessive about your body? Give away. So, how do you think we can raise awareness among people for uh, organ transplantation and cadaver transplant? I think more than transplantation, you need to create awareness on donation. Donation. And programs, media plays a great role. And I think in the last 19, 20 years also, we've had a great help from media. And at the same time, we need to be very careful of how we do our kidney transplants, how kidney donations take place. We have to look at organ commerce. We have to get rid of it totally in our country. You know, we have to take very severe action against people who do this. And only then we can go forward because we need to build trust in the system. We need to build trust in our society. But today, my, my worry is now the media also has a double-edged sword. Many of the television programs and the films show kidney donation in a very, very poor light. You know, somebody who's have a sort of money will say, Hamai jake kidney based mm -hmm. I think that should stop. So we need to build a trust in the system, in the community. And I think Indians are very giving. And I think if properly a family is explained, then they will say yes to donation. So uh, recently, has there any any regulation from the government side to help uh, in this, uh, to move further in this direction? Yes, we've had a law, which is a good law on brain death. And in 2011, we had an amendment. And you know, the law now says that if there is, you know, brain death, you must ask for organs. That is also mandatory. The driving license will have an organization clause. So I think that's very positive. And that's called a mandated choice. Where whenever you go for driving license, you can have a choice of whether you want to do organs or not. So I'm hoping that this 26th January, the Prime Minister will announce it. 
that's you know I don't know whether it's a secret or not, but I have had it from the grapevine. But we have been working on it for last ten years. We have been writing to the ministries, we have appealed to them, we have given them a plan of action, and now if it comes through, then that will also create a lot of awareness. So it is all about creating the right awareness in the community and building trust. You know, that's how we can go forward. So you've been a surgeon and you've done a lot of work in this direction. So what has been the most challenging case and the most interesting case in your career? You know, there are many challenging cases. The first case which I did, I think that will require another interview probably. <laughs> but the first time I did, this was a 12-year-old boy. And he was playing in his garden. And he was bitten by a snake. And when he came to casualty, we had to intubate him because he could not breathe. And then he was in ICU. This was a 12-year-old boy who had snake bite. This was way back in 95 or 96. And I just arrived from England. And the family said, the father you know, was very distraught. And he said, if you want to take his organs, take it. You know, and that was a very challenging case because previously, no case, such case had taken place. But the brain death from a snake bite, you know, to be transplanted. So we waited for five days because we were worried about the venom and so on. So we waited for five days till the, all the venom would be washed out, hopefully. There was no documentation, but we took a chance and it worked. And we transplanted two kidneys into two ladies, one was 48 year old and 52 year old. And those kidneys worked for a good 12, 15 years and one lady is still on follow up. So that was a very challenging case and I can keep going on and on. And then we had one lady who was HIV positive and I went on to do a transplant on her. That was a very challenging case. That was the first HIV transplant in our country. So there are multiple such cases I can keep going on and on and I can tell you such real life drama stories which will make excellent dramas and you know, movies as perhaps you know uh, there's no end to this I tell you that so so do you think an online platform of doctors like Docflixes can help provide, uh, create awareness among doctors about organ donation absolutely I think before creating awareness from the public we have to create awareness among the doctors our public profession our doctors because they are the ones who are really unaware many of them don't know what the brain death is I can challenge many of you what is brain death? If I ask you, you will not have a proper explanation. You will have a very vague explanation. And if I ask you how many organs you can donate after brain death and how many organs you can donate after natural death, you again will be very vague. Because, you know, in medical field, in our MBBS, we are not you know, taught all this. You know, so we have to educate our medical professionals first. Because our challenges in the ICU, our challenges with the neuro people, neuro, neuro, neurologists, neurosurgeons, if we can overcome that challenge, I think we will succeed in this career program in the country. Definitely. And I think you guys are doing a great job. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for this interview. Thank you. To stay updated on our latest scale videos and interviews, please follow us on Twitter, like us on our Facebook page, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Happy Doc Flexing!